Hey friends, hi, it's Marie with Living Felt coming live from right here in Central Texas to wish you a very happy Wooly Wednesday. I have a special treat for you today and that is you're going to get to see each and every one of the fairies who is working today. I know that many of you have missed them. Uh, welcome to Wooly Wednesday. We are Living Felt based here in Central Texas, supplying and playing with friends all over the world. So we're so glad that you can join us today. Today let me show you really quick what we're going to be doing. We are making these little fantasy butterflies. There are so many things you can do with them and I even have a special surprise of what you can do with them. So I hope that you'll play along. You're going to want to grab the PDF. We shared a link in the description. Also a link on our Facebook pages, our regular page and our group and it's going to list all of the supplies you need as well as give you some um, simple patterns that you can use and we're going to use those in today's show. So I'm going to be sharing more of that with you but I want to say hi to a few folks and welcome you all. Hey you'll notice that some of our veterans are saying hi and where they're from so I hope you'll do the same thing. Just say hi and where you're from and if this is your first time watching the show just say I'm new or that it's your first show. There's our good friend Marjolene in the UK. I see Ula in Sweden. Sue is also in the UK. Jody and Lee in Connecticut. Hi folks, so glad to see you. We have Terry in Wisconsin and Tracy in Virginia. It's so awesome and I know it's snowing for a lot of you folks, which so Kathy's in Ontario. I know we have a few folks in Canada and Michigan it's snowing too. Crazy that, I don't get it. We go from sweater weather here one day to like summer dress is the next so we're we're all confused for sure <laughs> so wherever you are just say hi and join in the conversation let me tell you how the show works so almost every week we come live and we share a live tutorial sometimes needle felting sometimes wet felting sometimes making crafts from what we made prior and I'm going to share actually a few things that we did in the last few weeks so we'll share a live demonstration you can download a PDF from our website even a, a shopping list or a supply list of things you can gather of your own join in the conversation while we work on our tutorial today because everyone who participates gets your name entered to win a prize at the end and if you're watching the replay and if you can't leave your comments in the chat box then you'll leave your comments down below after the show you can leave comments comments down below. So that either place you'll be able to enter to win a prize and we always love giving away prizes to our friends. So let me see who's here. I see okay Darlene has joined us and my chat windows already stopped. I'm going to say hi to just a few more folks. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, I see there's Brenda. She said it was 26 degrees last night. How's that? It's like April already. <laughs> Kathy is in Texas. Sylvia is in Italy. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for being here. So all week long we like to hang out in our group uh, called Living Felt Friends over on Facebook. If you don't belong to, to that yet I hope you'll join in. Um, you just have to answer three questions. Make sure that you answer those questions and that you have a real Facebook profile so you need a head and some uh, basic history if you don't have history just write us a note on our contact us page and let us know so we can accept you um, but so two weeks ago we made what we called was an artful felt fabric we wet felted fabric and so many people joined in that fun and made beautiful pieces of fabric and then the next week we made these little like um, prayer flags and uh, brooches and talismans and whatever whatever all kinds of things we made um, from what we did there and I want to share a few pictures of um, some things that people made on the show so let me just run a quick little slideshow and this is just a handful I promise of a multitude of amazing artworks that you all did our super amazing community so here's a quick play Okay, this is Cindy Stroud. She made purses with her fabric, and a few people did, some cool purses. This is Debbie Young. Look at all the variety of things she made with her fabric. 
Ivadine Anderson, such beautiful pieces there, Ivadine, lovely. Um, there's Karen Oswald. I love how rich that is and how she put it on denim. Denim is one of my favorite. Um, there's Linda Broderson. Look how sweet those are. And what a little piece of artwork with that little chickadee. And this is Linda Reeder. She made an awesome bangle. I don't even know if that's a covered bangle if you look at the shape. And then there's Laurel Muldoon, another beautiful little works of art. Paola Ortz in Mexico. She's been here a few times. We love that when y'all can visit. And Rita Pearson, such beautiful, beautiful works. We just want to thank you all so much for felting along with us and then sharing what you made. That's the favorite for us. And then I brought in my little bag. Um, I wanted to show you, you know, that you could also sew with your felt. And this is just a little quilt as you go project. I made a little um, zipper bag from all recycled materials. And then I just sewed in a little piece of handmade felt. So once you learn to wet felt, you can do so many things with the pieces. But I think that's also true with needle felt as we're gonna see today. So we have a really fun project for you. Make sure you grab the download in the description. And now, as I know many of you have been waiting for, each of the fairies have, are gonna make an appearance. They have something to share with you. And um, we're doing our social distancing, so that's the only reason we're not all in here elbow to elbow at the same time, which is kind of strange when you feel like family. It's a little odd. But so first up is Fairy Anne. Yay! Hi friends, we're so excited to be here with you today. These lovely assortments are our MC1 Studio Packs. MC1 Batting is our signature line of fiber. We love working with it. We know you're going to love working with it too. MC1 is a short, crimpy fiber that is about 25 microns. The reason why we picked it for this project today is because, especially with needle felting, the MC1 batting just, it's easy to achieve such a beautiful, smooth texture and fine details that, stay tuned, you're going to see exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> These packs right here are just three of the studio packs that are available. We have studio packs available in every color family and also some thematic packs as well. So no matter what you're working on, we've got a studio pack with a color palette that is just going to be great. <laughs> this one right here is our blues, summer flowers, and purples and berries. And while the colors that come in these studio packs can vary from round to round, these are really good examples of the values that will be in each pack. Those are awesome. Everyone <laughs> loves them, Anne. Awesome! Yay! <laughs> and next we have cool. Miss Holly to share some more MC1 funness. Yay! Thanks, Sam! <laughs> Hi, everyone! So today I'm going to talk to you about our MC1 goodie bags. There's three ounces of MC1 in a goodie bag, and you get an array of colors. We always include black and white, and then we um, give you one or two colors of every colorway just kind of depends on what we have but this is a pretty good representation of our standard mc1 um goodie bags um they're also they're great if you're just buying a, some two ounce or some rolls of single color or you get one of our studio packs they're kind of a great uh, supplemental item as well because you do get to experiment with all these other colors and see what kind of fun you can have so now we have fairy hannah Yay! Everyone loves them, and they say hi, fairies, and they've missed you all. Hey, everybody. We miss y'all, too. How are y'all doing? So today, I'm just showing y'all a couple of our Earth Harmony needle felting foams. These are two of the most popular sizes. We have a 12 by 12 and a 10 by 7. So they're both good for smaller projects, larger projects, and just kind of a multi-use foam when you get them in these sizes. They are going to be made with 65% biomaterial, so that does mean that they're earth friendly. They also will have no CFCs or fire retardant material in them, so they won't have any of those funky smells that you get sometimes with other products. They don't have any odor or aroma at all, so that is a little bit more living felt friendly. We like to keep those odors out of here, out of our wool, out of our fiber, all that jazz. Um, 
And um, they also are a very dense material, which means they're going to hold up really well when needle felted with. They're not going to crumble over time or turn yellow or start, start falling apart on y'all. So if you take good care of them, they will last you quite a long time. So that's those. It was so good to see y'all. I've got Miss love, Kayla. We love you too. Love, they sing high, they <laughs> love the mats. They love the foam. And yeah, they miss the fairies. Yeah, we miss y'all too. We're ready for everything to get back to normal. <laughs> I got Miss Kayla coming in to show y'all some stuff as well. Y'all have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Hi, everybody. It's been so long since I've been in. You might not recognize me with my hermit hair is what I've got going on here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm showing off some of our fantastic wool felt sheets that will be, well, Marie will be using them today. And I've got these here. They're 100% wool. They're about one millimeter thick, so they hold up really well to be needle felted and manipulated for wings or ears or anything like that, whereas the acrylic kind of crummy ones don't hold up as well. <laughs> but yeah, we've got some awesome colors right here. It's just a little sample. We've got lavender, fuchsia, sorry I'm a little shaky, <laughs> uh, powder, turquoise, orange, peach, and sunshine. Yay! So, they love it, and oh. uh, Pam Blackmer says she has hermit hair, too. Oh, and to keep on our butterfly theme today, can anyone guess why the butterfly was not allowed to go to the party? Because <laughs> <laughs> no. it was a mothball. <laughs> We're like, we need like a corny audio track in here somewhere. <laughs> Here comes my hook. <laughs> Yay! Can we just have a big round of applause for the fairies? I know you all have missed them so much, and I just love having them here. And you know what? We love all working together. I love having them in my life. These are the gals who pack your orders. These are the gals who make all the brilliant things you buy from us. They're the ones who answer the phone. They're the ones who answer your emails and your CRMs. And yep, they're pretty much like that every day. <laughs> Just amazing and lovely to work with. So thank you all so much. Um, as we are, have been adjusting to our social distancing, we've kind of gotten used to wearing our masks around work, but we don't love it, but we do it because we want to stay well. Um, and we want you all to stay well too. So we think that art therapy is really good for you. And that's why today we're going to be making these fun little fantasy butterflies. So whether you're watching the live or whether you're watching the playback, if you're ready to get started, give us a heck yeah. Uh, in the comments box and if you're unable to comment let me tell you it's just because you need a Google profile so after the show you can set that up everyone who's able to comment in the chat window during the live show or afterwards in the comment box down below needs a, some kind of Google profile you don't have to have a YouTube channel but you do need to be recognized by their system in order to chat with us and communicate with us and remember um, to do that in order so that you can comment and if you comment you get entered to win fun prizes so we'll give away prizes at the end okay cool so great thank you all so much uh, Starlet asked about the flowers that I'm wearing and can we make that yes Starlet so actually these two flowers were made on two separate of our videos so when after the show if you search living felt flower or if you look under our wet felting playlist, this one is called wet felting fancy flowers and we wet felted the flower without the stem and just added some embellishment fibers and added beads for the stamen. And then this one um, we made with a stem and that's a separate video so you could combine the two techniques but both of those are free videos on our YouTube channel now that you can watch actually. So thank you for that question. And cool. Okay, so today we're making these butterflies, and I want to show you one cool thing before we get started on the butterflies. And some of you made these little Waldorf dollies with us a few weeks ago. 
And as I pulled out, my butterflies and my dollies were not made at the same time, not even in the same year. Uh, these butterflies have actually been around for a few years now, and I don't know why I've never taught them. But it turns out that the butterflies I made are like just perfect for my little Waldorf dollies. And all I did was just pin it on her back. Now, um, these are made on wool felt sheets, and I'm going to show you how to do that today. But this is my little... Um, She's like my little flower girl, and then I had my little moon girl, and she actually has butterfly wings that match her too. And I didn't even do that on purpose. I think it's just that I have color palettes that I like, and so if you're making your Waldorf dolls, that might be a fun, <laughs> a fun little addition to your Waldorf dolls. So we'll look at that as we go through uh, the project today. So I'm going to watch for your comments as we work together and look forward to seeing what you have to say. Uh, if you downloaded the supply list, you'll know that we are working with the wool felt sheets uh, that Hannah showed you, and then, I mean, that Kayla showed you, and then we're also going to be working with our iron-on transfer pen, so I really do like the iron-on transfer pen, and here's what you're going to do. If you download this um, PDF, then in there I've just provided for you a few semi-crude um, outlines for butterfly wings and let's talk about those just for a second. So let's look at them and how you use them. Um, okay, so the butterfly wings, I, these, these ones have some inner, some inner designs and then we're giving you two pages without inner designs, just the exterior wings. And like I said, they're a little bit crude. I just hand drew them. But I left them that way so that you can play with drawing different patterns inside your wings. So if you look at this butterfly versus this butterfly, let's see if I can push them up there, versus this butterfly even, they all have slightly different details to the wings, but I've used the same basic shape. And so by giving you these empty wings, you can play with some inner design patterns of your own. And then once you're happy with those, then we're going to use our iron-on transfer pen to trace over those designs and apply it to the felt. So let's do that together because we get asked um, we get asked about the iron-on transfer pens all the time, and I do like to show them all the time. They're one of the first tools that I ever got um, when I started felting. So all you need, this is an iron-on transfer pen. We sell it in the shop. It's called the Sulky Iron-on Transfer Pen. And to get it started, you shake it. Let me get my iron going. Um, you just shake it. And you want to start the ink. This is the most common thing is people saying that they're not getting the ink on the design. So just get the ink started so that you know it's coming out. Then you're going to print your design just on regular paper from your, like the regular paper you would use to print any document. It doesn't have to be fancy. Um, so just your home printer and any design you want. Uh, and I'm going to get to some of your questions right now. So then what we're going to do is trace over all of the lines you want with your iron-on transfer pen. So I'm just going to trace over my pencil lines here. And while I, I'll try and answer some of your questions while I trace over my pattern. And you do want to get enough ink on there. I'm going to put a piece of paper under there just so I don't bleed all the way through. You do want to get enough ink on there for it to transfer. One of the most common things is that people will buy a yellow pen from us and expect it to show up on denim, and that isn't the case. It's not like a paint pen, you know, that would overlay a thick material. It is just an ink, so light pens do not show up on dark fabric. And if you're unsure if your mark is going through, um, that's why it helps actually to have your extra designs. You can see, is that transferring? Um, Lee Davy says, where can I find the supply list? Lee, we, I'll tell you all a few ways to go. So from, if you go to our website, livingfelt.com, scroll to the bottom and look for the link that says YouTube videos. Then, from the YouTube videos, click on the year 2020, and this video today, for this week, will be the top link. And there, you can find the PDF 
uh, link on that page. If, you're, if your pen seems like it's not running, well then just tab it. I'll just do it right here. So you just tab it on a piece of paper so that you kind of juice up the felt part um, so that your ink is flowing out. Is there a butterfly kit, someone asks. You know what we have is a monarch kit. So for this project, we don't have a kit. We have, but you can buy these supplies that we just shared with you. So the felt sheets of your choice, a studio pack or a goodie bag of your choice, needles if you need them, the iron-on transfer pen, maybe we could make it a bundle. That would probably be an easier thing to do, a bundle so you can choose your colors. Okay, so once you have your design all traced out and you're happy with it, and you can add as much or little detail as you want. With the iron-on transfer pen, I always say only outline the lines that you want on your fabric. And after you've done this a few times, your opinion might change on that. How you know how much detail to put, and then um, I think the other thing I want to touch base on this design for you to notice is that these wings are not touching and they're independent, and there's a reason for that. So you're going to see when we get to assembling our butterfly, um, there's a reason the the wings are separated. But you might choose a more cohesive butterfly design, and we do have a monarch butterfly kit on our website under needle felting kits. So place your design where you want it. And then you're just going to take a hot, dry iron and you're going to hold it in place. So don't swish it all around. Just hold it in place over your design for about 20 seconds on each area. And the iron, so the iron is on the hottest setting, which is like silk for me. And it's dry, so no steam. Just press. You don't need to swish it around. If you're using a very thick fabric or like a denim or a canvas, then you might heat up the canvas with your iron first. So a few more questions. Um, let's see. The butterflies, Karen asked, can the butterflies be double-sided? They could be. I should grab our little llama. You would have to make two sets. But like on these wings, the purple wings, it's almost okay that they're not, that the back is not. Um, if you're like, if you're doing a dolly, if you view it from the front. But, uh, and this one, I used a gray on the back of the blue butterfly. The one that is not so attractive is I, when I made this one, I only had gray on the orange butterfly. Um, and so that one's not so attractive. So today we're going to use orange. Okay, so I've heated up my paper maybe a little more than I should. But what I want you to notice is see how the lines are coming through the other side, at least a little bit. You can see that. And then you can also test and just peel back your paper. That is all the outline we need to get started on our design. You don't even need any more than that. Okay? So, get, so just get your designs, whatever you want, tr trace over them with your iron-on transfer pen, and then put them on your felt or fabric or whatever it is you're going to be needle felting. And you can transfer a bunch of designs at once if you want. Okay, I'm just going to turn my iron off. And then um, today I'm going to be working with the summer pack. So I'm going to be working on kind of like this orange set of wings, but just a different pattern. I really want to encourage you guys to think outside the box, just play a little bit, and have fun with your designs, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to make, there's like total freedom in needle felting for sure. Okay, Audrey asked, is my iron hot or cool? It's definitely hot. My iron is definitely hot. Okay, now I'm going to sit. It's easier for me to sit in needle felt. And hi, Jane in Louisiana. Okay, so I have my design on my... I have my design on my felt here. Here it is. And I'm going to be using these colors, but I'm just going to play with my designs a little bit and show you how you can draft this fiber out to get some really fun lines. And you can play with any um, fibers that you like. So in making a few sets of these, I have found that I really do like to 
trim the wings with a one solid color. You might end up, you know, deciding you want to cut it off, but like this one where the design kind of floats off the wing, is, it doesn't, I, th I think it's not as powerful as when the wings are trimmed with a dark color. And that's just, you know, that's just going to be your preference. Whatever you want is what you should do. There's no rules. But I do want to say that this is a great project to really practice your skills and that is to make a really nice piece of felt. Just because the project is simple doesn't mean that you should leave it half baked. You really want to, you know, put your time into it and needle felt it really well. The other thing is we're going to cover up all of these lines with the wool so the ink does not disappear. This is a permanent ink. You're going to want to cover it with your fiber. So this is how I like to work with the MC1 fiber. So permit me as I just um, turn this over a little bit and I'm going to get this um, this started. Um, I'm going to get this started on here and then I'll probably jump to another piece. We're going to be drafting the wool out. So this is MC1 batting. If you've not worked with it before, it's short, crimpy fiber. It comes in a batting and it's easy to get um, it's easy to get details with it because it is so short and it is so easy to work with. So I'm just going to start in one point here and notice that I'm drafting it out and I'm just going to needle felt it down as I draft it. I am working with my 42 triangle. This is the finest needle that we carry and the reason I work with it is it's not overly aggressive. The felt itself is thin and I am going to be pretty much pushing that wool immediately th into the felt material and through to the back side. So I don't want to push it into the foam. I want it to sit on top of the felt while also sitting flat. The 42 triangle has very fine barbs, so they're not great big notches in the felting needle. And um, I'll put this little guy over here just as an inspiration. And um, they so it has little notches, but also they're very close to the tip of the the tip of the needle right here. Let's see if I can get it right there. So the tip of the needle right there. So you don't have to push it very far. Notice that my strokes are just very very shallow. Um, John and Teresa Cavender ask, can we use our artful felt fabric for the wings? Yes, you can use whatever you like. The, wet, the fabric that we wet felted a few weeks ago is going to be thicker than this material here. So just play with it and see if you like it. But you absolutely can. You absolutely can. Um, if Carrie says, do you have to iron the pattern exactly like this, or can you move the pieces around so... Um, of the of your felt it's not pre felt carry it's felt more effectively yeah you can make the designs however you want we're actually going to be cutting these wings out so that they're independent so let me show you that this little guy I only tacked him on um, I tacked him on just to show you at first uh, that that butterfly but we're going to make them separate and that way when you go to assemble them be they on your doll or on a pin or on something else that you can position the wings however you want and that's why the design is laid out like this because I wanted it to be independent I wanted each wing to be independent so this is all you need to do to get lines with your MC1 is you're going to just draft it around and trace around all of the lines that you want to fill in. Then um, once you get there, and I'm going to jump ahead in just a moment, what's so fun about MC1 is that you can just patch it and fill it in. Now this color I'm working with right here, this is red grapefruit, a very popular color, red grapefruit. This is um, orange cream, which is just a soft, creamy, a soft, creamy orange. Um, and this one, this is my top wing. I'm just going to use it. I'm just going to use that right here. So the fun thing about these wings is you really can make up whatever designs speak to you. Whatever designs you like that speak to you, that is what to make. And that's what I wanted to share with you. So MC1 is different from roving. 
um, is not is not a roving. We could make it in a roving, but most often when you're buying fibers out in the marketplace, you are buying. Sometimes people just sell wool roving, and honestly, they don't even tell you what it's made of or any characteristics about that fiber. But MC1 is a unique fiber. It's a short fiber. It's crimpy. You're going to be able to manipulate it and needle felt it very, very flat. So I'm going to answer a few of your questions, and I'm going to jump over to a design that I've already been working on, and we'll see if we can add to that one. Um, so this is one that I started, which is slightly different. It's slightly different from this wing pattern, and I think that's part of the fun, is that you can, you know, you can make your wings just any design that you like. And what I want to show you is that you can see the back of this is um, slightly fuzzy where the wool is pushed through, but it's not heavy on this side. You see how there's big open areas and the wool is just lightly coming through the back? That's because I'm using a 42 triangle needle. If I was using a 38 star or a 38 um, spiral even, it would be pushing a whole lot more wool through to the back and there's no reason to. You want it to just sit right on the surface like this and sit right here. So this pattern I've been um, changing up a bit and I'll just, I'll fill in a little bit more on this guy over here uh, while I look at a few of your questions. This inner part right here is mango. And let me see what some of your questions are. Um, I see that, uh, this is a great question someone asked, and I want to see who, who said it, is can MC1 be used for wet felting? And who asked that question? Let me see if I can get back to it. Um, Angela Kuchar. Angela, absolutely, MC1 can be used for wet felting. Um, a few places you can see that are we have a wet felting a vessel video and it's just called wet felting over a resist we make a simple vessel using our MC1 batting in blues and purple colors um, there is another video where we used MC1 we wet felted a canvas and then later we did the cluster houses uh, needle felted on top of that canvas so let me hear of anyone who did uh, the canvas uh, the cluster houses with us where we wet felted the background and then we needle felted on top of that um, let us hear from you and just say just say cluster houses so we know that that you did that with us and people can search that um, in our Facebook group also because the cluster houses were so awesome that came out of that project it was really, really fun. Um, Cindy Hall asks, have I ever done one of the type of stained glass projects? Cindy, I will tell you, now the stained glass that I've seen uh, felts that have been my favorite have been wet felted. And my friend, Kami Wogu, um, she came in last late last summer and we wet felted a gorgeous video um, that will be out later this summer um, on a stained glass wet felt and man I just want to tell you it's one of the most beautiful projects I've ever seen it's stained glass koi fish so um, watch for that because I think I would like you to learn the technique from her uh, that was going to be in our new online felting school, which we're going to be launching soon. We have lots of uh, great, great classes in that school. Um, but I want you to learn from her because Cami has really made a point to study with the masters and learn and refine her techniques. And you can make such a beautiful project with it. Um... Sabine says, with the transfer pen, make sure you stay inside the lines or the project will become fat. And I think, Sabine, that's probably good advice. I don't mind going outside a little bit. I just want to cover up the lines so that you don't have to cut your design. So the MC1, if it gets too long where you don't want it, you can cut it off rather than tear it off. Um, if you want or you can just snake it back up somewhere else so notice how easy it is to fill all that in and I could take so long to show you um, how to do all of this but let's see what questions you have if you have any questions about MC1 Audrey says would Coriadel work 
until MC1 can be accessed. Audrey, yes, if you don't have access to our MC1, you can use New Zealand Corydale. Um, what you'll find is that it's a very long staple, so snaking it around here is going to be nice, but filling in these areas, like this area here, is not quite as pleasant um, because it is such a long staple. Like here, I can just drop the MC1 down. I don't even need to do the trim yet. You can do the trim before or after as you want, but MC1 will just patch in. So with your New Zealand Corydell, I would say to mix it up and make it into a little batting if you can. And gosh, you know what? You can even trim those fibers to be shorter if you want to. So you don't have to leave them super long. Um, so I just want to show you how easy this is to patch in and fill in the lines. Um, will the wings be backed? That's totally up to you. Everyone's asking how thick should the fibers be? You only need enough fiber on here to cover your background. That's it. You don't need any more fiber on here than to cover your background. So let's look at this wing as an example. Here's a little wing. I've obviously put in lots of lines and lots of detail on it. But when you turn it over, you can still see the original felt under there is like a purple, like a, a purple felt. See that mostly lavender looking color? You don't even see that on this side. So all of that lavender you see is the felt. So there isn't, it's really not so thick. All that matters is that you have a full coverage on the top of your wing and you don't see the base fabric. That should be your goal is not to see the base fabric. Okay, and that's the same thing with this one. And you can have fun with the shadings and the shadows. It got hairy from my doll. My doll's hair is viscose. So here's a look at these wings. I'll open these up for you so you can see them. Just have fun, you know, with your designs and filling that in. And remember that if you use a 42 triangle needle, that the uh, you can just needle felt the wool so that it sits right on top and you don't plunge it all the way through to the other side. Heidi says and Anna Lee says can you needle felt some on the back side so it's nice from both sides. You can, you're going to miss some I'm going to tell you that each time you poke through one side what you're going to see is the fuzz poking through the other side. So one thing I did on another project which was our um, No Problema, y'all can look at, up the No Problema uh, video we did last year, but the other thing you could do is you could make two wings and then glue them together like that and that way it would be pretty on both sides. You could also instead of this you could play and um, put a fabric on the back, you know, with an iron-on fusible paper if you want to just make it different or fun. So, but if you want the, the pattern to look nice from both sides, then cut the wings out and glue them together and you can even trim them with a the yarn. And that's what we did on our No Problema project is we needle felted two llamas and glued them together back to back to make an ornament. And I will make a point to grab that in just a moment. Um, Kevin asked, y'all have so many great questions. These are awesome questions. Okay, so one of the questions is, uh, Lynn White says, I don't have MC1, can I use merino wool? And Lynn, I want to show y'all another, another butterfly, it's a moth actually, that I made using merino top. And I knew this question would come up, so I brought it. And this is, honestly, it's an unfinished project, but this is my elephant hawk moth. And the elephant hawk moth, and we don't we don't have this merino top these merino top shades anymore. I'm sorry to say, uh, the mill we used to get them from is not making them anymore. But this is my unfinished elephant hawk moth, and I made the wings first. Is I just wet felted a fabric. I'll just go a little bit. I wet felted a fabric just of merino top. So we have a lesson called the pancake lesson and you can learn how to make just a nice piece of plain fabric using merino top or whatever ever fiber you like. 
and then, and I'll grab the bag uh, of fiber so you can see what the fiber was. I cut out the wings, like I cut out what an elephant hawk moth's wings would look like, and then I emulated them with needle felting merino top on top of this. And this whole body was just like this, and I needle felted merino top on top of it to get this look. So you absolutely can, and I would say just use uh, very fine needles. Let me grab the wool so you can see what it was made with. <clears throat> and as I said, we don't have these, these colors anymore, but this is the fiber that this uh, elephant hawk moth was made with. So very wispy and very light and you end up cutting it and applying it. So in this case, the base wings were just made with the pink, so instead of a wool felt sheet, you can make your own custom wool felt sheet and have the solid color. But as you can see, I mean, if you're gonna display this on your desk or filing cabinet or on a shelf, you don't worry that the underneath side of the, links, the wings don't look beautiful. You can add a touch of color if you want to, but the other thing is, if you make your own wool felt, then you can make the material a little bit thicker and less of the wool will come through to the backside. So if that's really important to you, you might make your own wool felt because this, is thicker than this. So let me put those two together so you can see the, the thickness difference between those two. So something I made so I can get my design to only sit on the top or a commercial piece of one millimeter felt is only that thick. So is that helpful? to kind of think, so I know many of you want to, you know, if you want your design to look nice from both sides, is that helpful to consider? You can make, if many of you made an artful felt fabric with us last time and we used pre-felt, heck yes, you can use pre-felt, but I would try and use at least two layers of pre-felt uh, and then see is that thick enough? Because the pre-felt, uh, pre-felt can fool you with the thickness and you'll think it's thicker than it is. Um, so make a, just make a tiny test piece and your test piece can be like that big. It doesn't need to be, you know, a whole, a whole big sheet. Just make a test piece so that you get your handmade felt the thickness that you want. Y'all are asking so many good questions. Kevin asked, can you mix the um, specialty fibers with the MC1? So why don't we look at that, Kevin? I knew that would come up too. Um, and so what you have is difference in fiber texture, fiber diameter, or micron. I know a lot of you don't, you know, people always ask me after the show, what is micron? So that's, think of it as like the diameter of the fiber and just, the, you know, the texture in itself. So let's mix a little bit of this bamboo with our MC1. And just to make it really obvious, I'm going to mix it with the um, orange cream so you can see what that looks like because a bamboo, this bamboo fiber, and it's going to tear easily, but the fiber length is more about like this, whereas MC1 is like small. So you're going to want to play with it, but you could apply also it on top. But I'm, I'm going to show you that. I'm going <laughs> to, I should enunciate better. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll show you that a little bit. Um, Karen says, uh, okay, can you use two sheets of pre-felt? That's what I just said. That would be good. Yes, you can. And when you make your own wool felt, would you have to heal the edges when you cut the wings out? Sherry asks, no, you don't have to, Sherry. You don't have to, especially if you felt it well. So this fabric that I made was felted really hard and really well. So put it in your bamboo mat or whatever it is, but felt it really, really hard. And as long as you've made a very dense felt, then you can make it like that and cut it and you don't you don't have to heal the edges which for those of you who don't know you would take it from being a blunt end to a tapered end you don't have to you can just cut it okay so I'm just gonna blend some of this bamboo with the MC1 uh, to show y'all because I know Kevin asked that so this is MC1 in orange orange cream and this is bamboo and if I did it I would only do it in in little pieces uh, on a hand carter or a drum carter you could do it too but it's going to on the drum carter the MC1 might want to pill up just compared to the length of these two together. So what you can do though is just blend them just like this so that you get them kind of mixed in together. And now this would be the same with Angelina um, or even Neps. You can just blend them together. So now I have a little bit blended and um, 
like I said, you could also needle felt it on top, and I'm going to add a little bit more in here. And I'm going to read some more of your questions. These are all great questions. Lauren says, my husband says, I'm going to all the time. <laughs> Carrie says, bamboo has been so fun to play with. Dawn says, is bamboo like using silk fiber? Yes, very much. It's like using silk or um, viscose. <laughs> Kevin says that I'm an as a Texas word. <laughs> oh, I'm embarrassed now. I have my, my, my bad Texan language. Um, uh, Jennifer says fiber mishmash, right Jennifer, so last year we did what we called was a uh, fiber mishmash and we blended a bunch of stuff together like this and we made a, an autumn tree. So not only did we blend it all, but then we chopped it up into little bits and made just like a crazy, what I call fiber mishmash, so that you can just pick it up and pull from the variety. So this is us just getting this all mixed up together and why don't we just needle felt it into these wings that are kind of my play wings. In fact, I'll pull this out and let's put it right here in this spot and I'll read some more of your questions. Great questions, y'all. I really, I really appreciate that. Does it help to cut some of the long fibers to blend with short? You certainly can. You can cut them if you want to and we did that in the fiber mishmash. Uh, we chopped them up, we chopped them all up first. But here, what I would like, and one thing I like about this is I like seeing this stuff go squiggly, so I would leave it a little bit longer so that you can um, play with those squiggles and get them to kind of go where you want. These are all great, great, great questions. Um, Kathy says, how did I make the legs for the moth? You know what, I'll pull him out in just a minute because I want to show you all how to make a body and um, how to make a body and and I just made wire legs and then tucked them in there. But I didn't really plan to come and make legs today, so I'm sorry I didn't bring fiber to cover to cover those legs. Um, I missed the question. So someone says, that was my question last week. What was your question last week, uh, Faith, that, that I missed? Um, someone says, scary to cut the wool in tiny bits. You know, the thing is, is you don't have to cut a whole bunch. We did the fiber mishmash. Look for something that it looks like an, a fall tree on a blue sky background. That was our fiber mishmash project, and it was really pretty fun because it was a quick way to make a bunch of texture and a bunch of trees without uh, leaves with, on a tree without overthinking it. And um, yeah, so one thing I want to show you here with, you know, MC1 is that you can just kind of tuck it and group it wherever you want and um, just be playful with it. You don't need too much and you can just patch it in and do whatever you want. Um, wondering if the sparkly fiber would work. Okay, so I know that some of you are asking about the Angelina. So I did bring Angelina because I knew someone would ask. Oh, look. Now, we've been running low on Angelina. I'm sorry to say we're working on rebuilding our stock of Angelina. Um, so please bear with us on that, and we'll do our best to get it back in stock. So the Angelina is kind of an interesting beast, and it won't really necessarily go with these wings. But let me grab these this little project that I was working on before. And the thing is, when you want to blend in this, now this is really long compared to the MC1 is really short. So I know these colors don't match, but let's blend it. Uh, what do I have? I have something. Hold, please. I have some blue in here somewhere. I can't reach my bags. <laughs> my bags have goodies. Y'all keep asking questions, and I will get to that. I guess I didn't bring it in here. I didn't bring my blue. So we're just going to mix this with this. Why not? Because then you'll, you'll be able to see it. So I'm going to mix it with my, my hot orange just so you can see. So what happens with the MC1 and the Angelina is they're really, really different. But if you mix it all up before you apply it to something, um, then what happens is the MC1 is going to help trap the Angelina down onto your surface. And you can trim off any of the unwanted Angelina that you don't want. 
Okay, so now I have this little blob or a little mini bat, if you will, and Angelina is just sticking out all over the place. Don't worry about that so much. Just get it where you want it. So let's pretend that we want to put it right here, right here on our butterfly. I'm just going to take a little patch, just like you did with the MC1, and I'm going to just put some of that Angelina back right on top. So needle felt it down with your same needle and in the same way. And if you have some Angelina that's sitting right right on top when you get finished, well then you can just put a little blob of MC1 right over the top and trap some of it down. And oh by the way, that would be the same thing with neps. If you want to decorate with neps, let's drop a couple in there just for good measure. In fact, um, I'll drop some pink ones in there just so that you can see them. So pink neps just so that they'll show up. The most common thing with neps is people have a difficult time getting them to stick. And what I want to say about that is try not to put too many. Neps are already felted wool. So mix them in a little bit with your MC1 even, just a tiny bit and get a little bit of MC1 on top of them, but try not to make them too dense because neps are already felted bits. So especially when you're needle felting with them, put just a little bit down and then you can take a tiny pinch of MC1, lay it right over the top and think of trapping them down onto your piece. Okay, I'm gonna try and catch up to some of your questions and see what you got. Um, and they're going by so fast. Brenda says, Marie, have you ever ironed some Angelina to make flak wings out of just Angelina fiber? I have ironed Angelina flat and maybe um, happiness if you're out there, if you could bring me, if you can hear me, um, and you might only be watching, but happiness if you can hear me, bring me um, the flat Angelina samples that we have and also um, some black paddle wire. I don't know if she can hear me. So notice that with the neps that what you can do is just kind of trap them down with the MC1. So think of them as being sprinkles on top. Think of sprinkles on top of your cupcake. They don't all stick. Some of them are going to come off and neps are kind of the same way. Now if you want, you can get a little more aggressive needle and this is just the 40 triangle, so just slightly more aggressive. And notice that the 40 triangle and the, um, that the MC1 is trapping down the neps and the Angelina. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm going to keep needle felting this and uh, Anne just brought me in some flat Angelina just so y'all can see. So the Angelina that we carry is heat bondable. I am looking at some that is not heat bondable. I don't know. I don't know whether we'll get it after all, but um, quick, quick look here. So I've got this fuzzy beastie thing with some neps on it. Some of the neps are going to come off and some of this Angelina is crazy. So you can just take your scissors and trim off the unwanted Angelina and we're going to be cutting the wings out anyway. So just trim off the Angelina that you don't want so that it doesn't look hairy. Okay, But then you can have these sparkly, fun, playful butterfly wings. Just needle felt it so it all lays down. Some of your neps aren't going to want to stick, but you can trap them down with MC1 or just let some of them go. So go after them a little at a time. Remember, a little, a little goes a long way with the neps. Okay, cool. So that's how you do, you could blend in Angelina, you can blend in your luster fibers, and you can even add neps into your designs. Um, so Brenda asked, have I ever ironed Angelina to make it flat? And here are some examples of Angelina ironed flat. I've never just cut wings out with it, but why don't we just cut something out right now? I've used it in a variety of ways. Angelina that we've been carrying, as I mentioned, is heat bondable, but it only bonds to itself. And then you end up with this little flat thing. If you iron it 
between something that has a pattern to it, like um, a textured pattern, it would pick up that pattern. So if you want it a little more bumpy, iron it between something that's a little more bumpy. So these are just some fun examples um, of Angelina that's been ironed and pressed flat. And usually we just iron it between like paper towels, <laughs> really honestly just paper towels or even paper. And Linda asks, is there a way to tell which is heat bondable and which is not? I don't know how. I don't know how to tell the difference because this is really all I've ever worked with is Angelina that's heat is heat bondable. So uh, to answer Brenda's question, uh, so this piece was originally made to be an ice skating pond. <laughs> we, we made this to be an ice skating pond for a little tiny mini uh, thing that we made. So why don't we just cut out uh, one of our wing patterns from this while I look at some of your questions. Devin says, do you iron it between parchment? You can iron it between parchment or iron it between, um, I'll put it this way so we get the, the most we can out of it. Or we just usually use paper towels. All right, I'm just going to cut this out so you can see what it will look like. And I could be neater about it and trace it in the first place, but I'll just cut it out so you can see. Okay, and I'm going to look for more questions. Y'all are doing great, asking me so many things. Um, Tanisha says, how do you do it? Just iron it between, uh, just iron it between a paper towel. It only sticks to itself. Now, don't put your iron on it, but, uh, don't, don't press your iron on it, but just iron it between a paper towel. That's totally fine. I suppose you could leave this furry if you wanted it to be like angel wings. <laughs> you could let it be fluffy out there. Okay. Angelina happens, y'all. Okay, and I, I did get one of the little rough edges, but there you go. So I could cut that off. See where it's loose there? So this wasn't, it wasn't well bonded to itself. So you might want to really make it dense because if you leave it open, um, then it does get kind of webby like that. And then if you, when you cut it, then it's going to come loose like that. So all of that is just going to be a bit feathery. And you might like that. You might like the, the feathery bit. Um, can you needle felt on it? This, now this is weird stuff now. It's weird. I mean, you could try and attach it to something, but it's definitely strange now. So it's not like a, it's not like a fabric. It almost feels like a little plastic or I don't know. I'm trying to look for a word and I can't think of what it feels like, but it doesn't feel like something. It's not, if you poke through it, you're just going to poke holes really, you know? It doesn't have fibers itself that are going to bind on to anything. You're just going to poke holes on it. But you could glue it on if you want. Um, cool. All right, so we've looked at making our wings. We've looked at making our wings. We've talked about making them double-sided if you want so that you can have your pattern on both sides. I've got a mad An Angelina mess now going on. Um, you can make them double-sided if you want. You can make them on your own handmade felt if you prefer. Um, I'm going to clean my little table here because I have made a righteous mess. So you want to have a, um, you definitely want to have yourself a lint roller to, to clean your, your table, even if you just use wool. So just clean it with your lint roller. And like I said, I've made a total mess. But let's look at how you might build a butterfly or um, finish your butterfly and do the body and all the parts. So let's, let's look at that. And I really appreciate your questions. They're so helpful for me, giving me guidance, knowing what you want, what you want to know, what you want to see. So keep them coming. Uh, Mary says, how does the Angelina hold up? I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't play with it, <laughs> but once it's, once it's ironed, um, as long as you don't have those feathery bits like I showed you on that part, then, then you should be pretty good. Um, so you should be pretty good to go there. All right, so I want to show you about these wings, and why don't we cut out one of the ones that I already did, and then we're going to have to jump to our purple guy since he's all ready to go um, and see how we do that. So once, the, at least based on this design that I'm giving you, what I have you do is make a body out of MC1, and I'll, for those who are brand, brand new, I'll show you how to do that. Um, but what you're going to do is cut these wings out of your felt. So just get yourself a, a sharp pair of scissors, fabric scissors preferably, and you're going to cut right next to your design to cut those wings out. 
Now, if you decide to glue your wings together, you could try something like Aileen's Fabric Glue. That would be, that's what I use. I just use a Aileen's Tacky Glue. That's what we sell here. And you can um, glue your two wing sides together or some other patterned fabric to the back. Or like I said, you could use a fusible web, the kind of thing that you iron on, and iron that onto the back. Um, so that you just even have a fabric pattern on the back would honestly be pretty if you're going to do it for a doll or wear it as a brooch and you just want to cover that up. Um, yes. <laughs> Liz, thank you for the nice note. Maybe you could blend in some silk and then iron it for a bit of shine. That sounds fun. You know, I think you should just go crazy with this and make it as fun as you want. I showed you in the beginning of the show some of the amazing brooches, pins, magnets, talismans, even bookmarks and purses that people made out of the fabric that we made together a few weeks ago. There's really no rules. So the most important thing is to have fun and these little projects, you know, play with your designs, experiment, just put your personality on it, but make good felt. It's, you know, make good felt. So needle felt your stuff very smooth and firm. And hey, you can even steam press it after. You can steam press this right on the felt and give it a nice finish. Um, I won't do it now because now I'm on my my uh, foam. Um, so Terry says, can you use pre-felt instead of felt sheets? So Terry, what I would say is to test your density, uh, I would start out with a bigger piece of pre-felt than you need, and you really need to felt it all the way in order for these things to hold up. And there are different types of pre-felt. Uh, we currently carry a very lightweight pre-felt. Um, we're going to add a, a thinner pre-felt, but that's a little more felted uh, to our collection. So every pre-felt is different, and I would say yes, you can, but just make sure you felt it well. And you might even wet felt it first. I mean, that's what pre-felt is. It's pre-felted, it's unfelted, so wet felt it first and make yourself a nice uh, piece of fabric. Um, okay, so what we've done here with our wings is we cut them out independently and that allows you to position them however you like. So if you're going to put them on a little dolly, honestly, you could just needle felt them right on, like if you want to put them on your doll, you could needle felt them right onto the back of your doll, and that would look lovely. If you want to make a pin or a brooch, you could just make that body out of anything that you want. Um, and in this case, what I did is I needle felted MC1 into just this shape of a body. So. Let's do that for folks who are new, and I will look at uh, more questions. And let's see, I have such a small piece here. I'm going to work with, this is actually hot orange. I know it probably looks pretty shocking on your screen, but you just need a small piece. I'm going to tear this up, and we're just going to make a roll. And I'm going to read what you all have to say. Thank you all so much. Um, Would it be decent? I don't understand that question. I wish I understood all the questions. Okay, so when I make this, the first thing I'm going to do, sorry, I just started, is I like to make just a nice little stack. And then I'm going to just do a little roll here. And I'm going to tuck this end over, almost like making a little bul bulbous end up here, and let this, this end kind of taper out. But you want it to be tight. You want it to be tight and not loose. And you can now, once I have a couple of rolls going, then you can tuck this end up a little bit because we want it to have density. We don't want it to just taper out into nothingness. We want it to have some density to it so we can needle felt it in place. But just notice that as you're making the roll that you want this end to be thicker and this end to be more narrow. And if you don't feel like you can do that with the way you're pinching and rolling it, well then just add more material along the strip here so that it's naturally more thick. But you do want to round out those edges a little bit so they don't just taper away to nothing. Notice that I'm holding pressure the entire time because I, the tighter your felt is, the easier it is to make it firm. And for this part, I would normally use like a 38 star or a 38 triangle. Surprisingly, I didn't even put one on my table yet. But all I'm doing is tacking down all the loose ends first while I hold this in place. And then we'll needle felt around the whole shape 
and get it nice and dense and firm. So if you're brand brand new, the most important thing to know is that you don't stay in one place too long. It's better to work across your entire shape from various angles um, and needle felt the whole thing firm in multiple passes. You do want this piece to be firm, you, especially if you're going to do what I'm gonna show you next. You want it to be firm. Um, okay, I'm missing what you all are saying, but I know you all have some brilliant things to say. Um, and I'm trying, you all have such, such lovely contributions. Carrie says there's not enough time in the day for all the projects. <laughs> Carrie, I agree. I could just sit and make stuff all the time. So Lee Davies is, says, is the body MC1 also? Yes, Lee, it is. This is just MC1. You could make it out of core wool first if you want, but you don't have to. Uh, it's such a small piece that you don't have to, you know, take both of those steps. So keep needle felting your body until it's nice and firm. And this is this body is like semi-firm here. So what I did on my pieces, and we're going to jump to the purple guy now because he's ready to go. What I did on him and on these guys is there's two ways you can do it. Um, you can needle felt the wings onto the body or you can slightly insert them in the body. So play with that. Do it however you want. If you're going to insert them in the body, you might find that position first and see where you kind of want them, where you think they're going to go in. And then I like to see them just a little more towards the top, uh, like so they're not right in the middle. They're a little more towards the top of the body. And then I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going <laughs> to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut that a little bit. Now if you have an awl, and I can't believe I didn't bring my awl, then you can poke a hole with your awl. That's the best thing to do is to poke a hole. Let me get my, my real scissors, not these baby, these baby classroom scissors. Let's see if I can get there we go. So I'm going to make a little hole or puncture in your felt right there. Just do one at a time so that you're you're happy with it. And then you're going to get your wing and you can use your more aggressive needles like your 36. Let me grab one of those and poke it right into the body. Let me get a real a, a more a stronger needle. Our more aggressive needles are the 36 or the 32. So our 36 is pink and our 32 is blue. These needles push more wool and they're going to be more aggressive. So then what you can do is just get that wing in there and tuck it right inside. And just puncture it in there. Okay. So now, look, it's in there, and what you can do on the underneath side, and I didn't bring that, that color, but get it on both sides, and then what you're going to do is apply a little patch of wool right underneath the wing, just to kind of blend it. So. Make sure you have it where you like it, and if you want it higher on the body, then put it higher on the body or lower on the body, and then you can position the lower wing, oh, wrong, the lower wing where you want it. So you can have it like this, you can have it just tucked underneath, you can have it fully open, uh, fully exposed, however you like it, but just get the wings where you like them. And then underneath, each wing on mine, notice that I just patched a little tiny bit of wool there to give it a little bit of support. Can you see? Give it a little bit of support and hide all of your joins with a little tiny patch right there. Um, let's see, just a few questions. So I want to answer a few of your questions and thank you so much for them. They really help, they help me uh, know what you're looking for and they're always a question that somebody else has. So um, Devin says she loves tucking the wings inside and um, Jenny Trelore says, mind blower to put the, the wings on the Waldorf doll. You know, it was a surprise for me too. I had I'd planned to put some fun hats on my dolls and these wings just came together last night, so I'm so glad you like it. Um, Dawn Selfridge says she has difficulty making a tight bundle because she has arthritis in her hands and is there another way to do it? So what I would say if, you know, doing the, the bundle is difficult for you 
one of the things you can do, and I don't know if you're able to um, wrap tightly, but you can sort of cinch wool around wool to make the package come tighter together, and you might even try wool yarn. So um, you can um, you can just poke longer, and I find that sometimes a little more frustrating because when there's a whole bunch of air between the wool, it's not tight in the first place. It takes longer and you're poking, but a lot of air and gas seems to stay in the fiber. So if you can only roll loosely, let me see if I can offer something for you if arthritis is a bit of a problem. And you might even try wrapping with string and then tossing it in the washing machine, you know, to make a little hard bundle. But if you can get your piece, and I'll just try this real quick, see if I can show, give you an idea. Um, so if you have your piece and you're not able to roll it super tight, like right now I'm not really putting any um, any strain in my hands. I'm not cinching it down very tightly at all. I would still um, tack it down here and I would even work with a slightly more aggressive needle like a 36 or a 38 and it's going to leave bigger holes but notice that you can just guide the wool around. Don't worry about its finish just yet. Your underbody can actually be kind of ugly. Your underbody can have more holes and more dents and be, uh, it can be more rough looking um, than you might imagine. And you can then cover over the top with more wool. Now, if your underbody is loose, it's not going to want to be caught and have the fiber inserted inside. It's not going to want to support that. So I would say you still need to get it to be um, like some lumpy mashed potatoes with your needle felting. But if you want to get it dense and into a shape, try then taking some fiber, this fiber or other fiber, and to create yourself some longer, longer lengths with it. I'm going to anchor this one down. Just going to anchor this piece on there and let me get it in there really. Really anchor it in there so it's not going to come off. Now this is a short fiber so you can't pull on it too strong without it tearing, but what you can then do is try and bind it by twisting around and get those fibers to be closer together. Now it's going to look wonky and wobbly, but don't worry about it at first because you can do that in a couple of passes. So what you're doing then essentially is you're pushing air out by binding it, by, by I got Angeline in there, by binding it together. So try wrapping it a few times or using a wool yarn or something and then needle felt it so it's slightly more smooth and then I would cover it with a base layer of MC1. And we show that a ton in our Every every needle felting video, the owl, fantasy owls video, the gnome video, whatever. So there's lots of ways, uh, there's lots of ways to cover it. Okay, so I'm going to look for a few more of your questions, and thank you all so much. Um, yeah, Tracy says you could you could put it in the washing machine. It may not always get more dense, but uh, it's not like it's going to get hard per se if it's not hard inside. Um, um, if you throw it in the washing machine, but it'll definitely finish it up for you. So someone says, what about wrapping around a skewer? Yes, we show how to needle felt on a skewer in our needle felting an owl video, and also I think we use it in the gnome video, so a skewer is definitely an option. You could definitely look at doing that. Um, and... Um, so a few people are answering that. Thank you all for your contributions to that question. And uh, okay, good. All right. Lots and lots and lots of stuff on that. Okay. So anyway, I, w I don't see anything else that I maybe need to, to tackle right now. If you have it, post it right now, and I'm going to look for questions once more. So with your, you know, with your butterfly, you can add antenna if you want. You can add eyes if you want. You can add legs if you want. On my, let me see, someone asked about the legs, so let me see if I can grab my, um, on my elephant hawk moth, I just made the wings by the feet, the legs, by wrapping around little tiny wires, and I'll show you those legs, and then I poked them all the way through and did like a seesaw. I don't know if I would do that again. I had legs here. I don't know where they went. 
Um, I thought they were here in this bag. I'm so sorry. Um, because I really thought they were inside this bag a moment ago. Let me see if I have them somewhere. I, w I would show you if I had them, and I brought them, and now I don't have them. So I'll just zoom in once so you can see, and I'll just show you that the legs are just inserted through the body just like the, uh, the wings were done into the body on this guy. And it may, not be, it may not be the best way, but the elephant hawk moth, this is just our little... Um, paper covered 32 gauge white wire wrapped with MC1 and then I inserted the legs into the body so with an awl I poked a hole all the way through the body and put them in. What I don't love about that is that they seesaw and I knew this because one of the very first things I ever made was a two foot by two foot dragonfly lady with a face <laughs> and I did the same thing with the legs almost and those seesawed and I hated it always so it's not the best. Um, adding the legs on after poses that challenge otherwise you would need to build a little armature or some kind of breastplate with the legs already built on and then you could cover cover up that breastplate of wire with more wool but all I did was twist wire together and wrap it and we do that we do that tons in, in other videos as well. So uh, if you don't know how to twist wire and cover it, you might watch our Waffa Bird video, which we did at the very beginning of the year, where we made some, we used thicker wire and really strong legs, but we show how to wrap it. We also uh, have another video where we show you how to wrap wool for needle felting. Kat says, could you use... Uh, chenille stems you for the legs sure you could you could use anything you want y'all this is just a play project have fun just make it nice you know take the time with it don't rush it spend time to make it just how you you want it um, and Judy says can we make a hummingbird please you know Judy is so funny that was one of the very first uh, PDFs or tutorials that I ever put out was a hummingbird and lately I've seen more hummingbirds I think someone else has done a, a hummingbird uh, but it's one of the very first things that I did so somewhere in the archives is a is a free PDF but uh, maybe we'll we'll look at that uh, doing a little hummingbird or I know I was working on a chickadee that I never finished doing for the tutorial and I should do that um, okay couldn't you glue wire legs in sure uh, sure Jane you can you can glue wi wire legs in bring out the glue y'all there's no rules remember that okay there's no rules other than to have fun you know enjoy yourself enjoy the process play I really always like to just encourage you to explore your creativity I never am making a project for you to copy what I do it's more like just giving you ideas and things to play with and fun to have I hope because it's really fun for me and it's really fun for me to spend time with you too so I know I've gone over which is not a surprise um, but the fairies have delivered to me a prize hat and in that hat are some prizes uh, some names that we can draw prizes from so I'm going to check just a few more things if there's any more questions before we go um, can we make a woodpecker oh that's ambitious someone else says a hummingbird um, Nancy says use a bit of Aileen's tacky glue in the hole and insert each leg separately that sounds like a great idea that will keep the seesaw thing from happening insert each leg um, and yes you can use pipe cleaners for the antennae all antenna also and um, and Ronnie O says she's making a Luna Moth. That's awesome. Okay, so in my hat is a whole bunch of names. These are for people you've been participating in the conversation. Thank you so much for making it fun for me. We're going to draw two prizes right now of people who've been participating in the conversation. And if your name gets drawn, use the contact us form on our website to let us know what prize you choose because uh, you're going to have your choice. And um, if you've never ordered anything from us, then you also need to include all your contact information. And then in a few days over the weekend, we'll choose more winners if you leave comments down below. So after the video, the comment section below the video will be added. So if you've enjoyed this, I hope that you will give the video a thumbs up. I hope you'll consider subscribing. Um, you can hang out with us 
on Facebook and I'm just going to pop that up right here. That is our group. So come hang out with us, share with us what you make. You can follow us and tag us on Instagram. We always love sharing what you make and sharing what we're making. And if you want to shop with us, we are Living Felt. Uh, we ship all over the world all week long and love seeing what you guys are up to with our fibers. So here we go. Prize number one of two. The first one is Diane Pryor. Congratulations, Diane. You are one of our winners. I'm going to tell you all what you win in just a moment. And the next one is Margaret Benson. So we have Margaret Benson and Diane Pryor. Congratulations, ladies. You get to choose uh, from they took them out of here. So the studio packs the gal showed you in the very beginning You get to choose one of our MC1 studio packs. We have a ton of them to choose from or you can choose um, You can choose the goodie bag So the studio packs and the goodie bags have the same amount of fiber a studio back pack is going to have six colors that all go together and you'll find those under our MC1 batting or a goodie bag and we have a few different goodie bags we have a regular a winter and a fall they're all popular all year long and it's always just a fun assortment of colors to play with so I just want to say thank you all so much for playing with us today we hope that you'll give the video a thumbs up down below we hope that you'll subscribe and follow us so you get notified every time we go live we're gonna have a new project next week and I'll tell you what that is soon I'm not going to tell you today and in the meantime I'm going to be looking for your butterflies and your butterfly girls your butterfly dolls your butterfly pins whatever butterfly yay and remember you can make these flowers too so check out our other videos on YouTube we hope that you all stay safe stay well feed yourselves well feed your heart soul and mind well and we appreciate you all thank you so much have a great day bye